Hi, I'm Katherine Green, a member of the faculty in the Department of Communication at Rutgers University. And I'm here today to talk about a grant-related project that we have that targets adolescent risk-taking. We're specifically interested in looking at how to use media literacy to examine um, the onset of drinking um, in high school students. So we're going to talk for a minute about what is adolescent risk-taking and what's going on in this particular sense. So if you think about junior high, high school, or into early college, there are a lot of features that are going on with adolescents where they're trying to separate themselves from their parents, establish their own identity, they may be moving, and there are a lot of things that go on with decision making, uh, some of which is particularly negative for them. And so we're trying to think about campaigns and ways to engage them in new and creative ways, not sort of the same old thing. We're particularly interested in taking a look at brief interventions. So if you think about the interventions or the programs you might have sat through when you were in school, a lot of what happened when you sat through educational programs in school is they tell you just say no or they tell you, you know, be careful, don't talk to strangers or whatever it is that you went through. But teachers right now in curriculum, they're bombarded with testing and all sort of state state requirements. They don't have time for a 10, 12 week program to insert into their curriculum. So we're trying to do something that actually takes two class lessons. So we consider it a brief intervention. We're NIDA funded, that's the National Institute of Drug Abuse, and it's a part of the NIH, and we're working on this two year grant. So what's our approach? What do we think is different? Media literacy has been developed as a new, cool, creative way to engage adolescents mostly in thinking about how advertisers try to manipulate their attitudes and behaviors. So it's in the last 10 years become increasingly popular. It's based on the notion that you teach kids how to analyze advertising messages. So you show them some messages, this is what this ad is doing, this is how it's doing it well, this is the emotions that they're trying to generate. This is why they place these objects here. And what are the claims and what's missing from the ads? So that's part of the analysis part. And then the other feature of this is planning or production. And our argument is, is that if you let kids get involved in producing or planning their own messages, they're going to end up being more involved in the process and learn the decision making themselves rather than being told what to do they may actually come to better conclusions themselves. So here's an example of an ad that we use in our curriculum. And we've worked with this ad a little bit. And if you show this ad to adolescents and engage them in conversation, you can get them talking about this ad for almost an hour. It's not a very popular ad, which is one of the reasons we use it, because it's not one of the ones that's a major brand that you would have seen. But if you start thinking about how we would use this ad in the analysis part of the curriculum, Look at what's close up front and center. In the center of this particular ad that dominates is a group of people having a great time. I mean, if you look at these people, they're, they got their beer raised, they're hanging out, somebody's got a serving tray. There's a lot going on just with the people. You'll notice that they're dressed really particularly provocatively, but they're hanging out having a great time. They've got the foosball table too, so that's a really important feature. You start to look at the ad a little further, they're on a raft. Finally, you start looking at the details of the ad way back in the far left. There's a ship sinking. Now, these people are going to be stranded, but they've got the beer, so life is okay. So here's the message that's going on. And again, if you start looking at the details of the ad, you'll see the person that's seated has his leg dangling in the water. And if you look a little more closely, there are at least three sharks in this ad. Right, so when you start to think about the contrast in those pieces. So what we do with the ad in the curriculum, there are 10 of them in our curriculum, is you go through and you talk about different features and how these particularly work. Okay, so that's one of the examples of things that we do. So what does our curriculum look like? We developed it in phase one that went on last year. We did focus groups, we did interviews, we had teachers and mentors in schools, we had students both um, boys and girls and in interviews and focus groups to be sure that this curriculum was something that was going to engage them. We pilot tested the curriculum last year in March so we did a dry run to see how it worked and got some feedback and as a result changed a few ads in the curriculum. It includes examples of alcohol ads, we also have a couple of Coca-Cola ads and they're also seeing the opposite approach. So how does Mothers Against Drunk Driving or someone else use anti-alcohol ads in what they do? 
And then finally, in our curriculum that's going to be running in a few weeks, so it's in April of 2011, half of the students actually plan an anti-alcohol poster for their school. Right? So where are we going? What's the current and the future research plan? First of all, we need to document the effectiveness of our program. Um, Evidence-based programs are really important for teachers right now with competing resources. So we want to prove better than we did last year. Last year we had pretty good evidence that it worked, but now we need better evidence to say, hey, this thing actually works so that we can put it in schools and use it. So what's the design? Has to be a well-designed study. We have a control group, so we have kids in the school that aren't exposed to it. We have a pretest. We have a post-test right after they go through the intervention itself. And then four months later, we have a delayed post-test. So we have a design that's a lot stronger than people have used to study prior media literacy curricula. It's a part of a larger project. So in terms of moving forward, as we look to things, sustainability is a really important process. As a researcher, I love doing this work and working with schools and leadership programs where we are. Our particular project this year focuses on uh, a leadership program in Pennsylvania that samples from 50 different schools throughout Pennsylvania. So it's a pretty wide ranging rural urban um, comparison. But we want to be sure that we train the people in this program so that they can continue the program without us. And our larger project that we're going to be applying for, uh, we're actually trying to involve 4-H programs um, in three different states right now to, to take a look at this. So our projects, they're evidence-based. They're trying to be cutting edge with involving uh, media literacy and new curriculum. And we're trying to document the social significance so that we can move forward and impact an important adolescent risk behavior. Thank you.